the thing that you are resisting is oftentimes the thing that is going to give you that breakthrough that you want in your life and in your business, depending on where that resistance is. So for me... Welcome to the Raw and Real podcast. Are you dreaming of changing your life through opening a business? Or are you curious what obstacles entrepreneurs had to overcome on their journey? Then you're in the right place. My name is Agnes Billig and I'm your host. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Raw and Real. Today's guest on the show is Kate Hor Lacey. She's an intuitive sales and mindset mentor that helps female entrepreneurs and industry leaders break through fear and own their value. She often works with people who really dislike sales and helps them to fall in love with a new way of selling that is aligned with who they are. Welcome, Kate. Thank you so much that you're joining me today. My pleasure, Agnes. It's great to be here. Hi, everyone. In general, I'm really curious because I saw that you had a career as a singer in the past, and I'm just really wondering how you ended up in sales. Sure. Um, so I actually, I originally wanted to be an actor. Like I really wanted to do Shakespeare and be on the stage. Um, and I went for NIDA, which is our biggest acting school here in Australia when I was 19. And I got down to the last cut and then I missed out. And then I didn't have any other backup plans. Uh, so I ended up in a sales role and I was like, oh, great sales. Are you serious? Not only that, it was a direct sales role. So it was selling really good quality Australian-made surfwear, but selling it direct to the companies and taking orders. So not an easy sales role either. Um, but I applied myself. I did it to the best of my ability and I did okay. And then I got really life-changing sales and mindset uh, training mm -hmm. and I really put that into place. And then I rose to be top sales rep in, the, in Victoria in, in our state. What and kind of training was, was that? Uh, the training that we had, um, it was two days of sales and mindset training. It was all about goal setting, how to answer objections, all that good stuff that I teach now. And I just really took it on board and implemented it. And uh, that really did help my sales, and especially the goal setting piece and the mindset piece. It really made a massive difference. Um, and then I was, you know, one of the top reps in Australia, top rep in Victoria, they promoted me to be Victorian State Sales Manager. I was the youngest and only female manager in the company. Um, and I, was, I started training people then, taking sales teams to, through training. Um, then I came to Sydney with my first boyfriend and I was making up to like 32 grand in my 20s, um, which is a lot of money like, you know, back then or at any time, I guess, like my, you know, making that amount. I remember paying like $12,000 tax in one month. That's how much I was earning. Um, and using kind of sales, uh, all the every, everything I'd learned then. Then I got a break to become a professional singer. And then I did like, you know, but after 1,500 gigs, I got a bit bored of singing because I did love business. I knew I needed to do something else, but I didn't know what. So I prayed for my next step. I believe kind of, you know, life's for living and we want to use all of our capacities and everything we're given. And I knew I needed to not just use the creative side of my brain, as much as I loved it, I loved it for pretty much the whole time I did it. But towards the end, I was kind of needing something more. So within a couple of days of saying, look, what's my next step? Uh, one of my best friends who owns a marketing agency um, said, Kate, I've just done this massive launch. It cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. No one was signing up. Everyone was saying no. And she's like, I hate sales. Wish I didn't have to do it. Can you please help? So, of course, I said yes. I started training her. Within a couple of sessions, she signed up her first really high-end client. I just was tweaking things as we went along. She started saying, this is actually really fun. And I thought, oh, my gosh. You know, I would have just thought that she would have been brilliant at sales because she's so smart and she's so good at what she does. And now I'm like, how many other people are really good at what they do, are really smart, are really, you know, good people people, but they just don't know how to sell? And she's like, gosh, you should really you know, you should start coaching people. This is awesome. So that's what I started doing. And, uh, and yeah, so that's, that's basically my story of how I fell into to doing what I do now. The friend that you helped out, so what were the main mistakes that you saw that she was making, how she was maybe framing words and what did you really help her to change? 
she was talking too much, like just talking about all of the benefits rather than, sorry, the, the features rather than the benefits. For anyone out there, a lot of people do this, especially, um, you know, it can be anywhere from if you're selling software, for instance, you can talk about all these great, you know, ways that your software does all these whiz-bang things and it's things that you're really proud of, but the customer doesn't actually care about it. If you're a healer, a lot of the healers will talk about the modalities that they are good at, like they're into, you know, they do Reiki and kinesiology and, you know, deep tissue massage, and they're really proud of this stuff and they're trying to sell using these things, but yet the customer doesn't care. Really, all the customer cares about, and if anyone out there is really interested in getting better at sales, if you can start thinking from the customer's perspective, like how does this matter to them? And really all customers or clients really care about is, is it going to save them time? Is it going to save them money? Is it going to make them money? Or is it going to get them out of some sort of pain, some sort of physical pain, some sort of mental pain, some sort of uh, emotional pain, right? So if you can keep that in mind and then you use that as the spearhead for your sales, you'll be doing a lot better. Um, so what this coach was doing is she was going into a lot of detail about, you know, this program's got seven hours of video and all this other stuff and it's just, uh, it just doesn't make sense from a customer's perspective as to why they want to go ahead and to say yes. Um, the other thing that uh, she needed help with was closing. You know, a lot of people get really, really kind of unsure of themselves when it comes to asking for the sale. And there, there are ways, you know, you can really get some help around this, uh, you know, get a mindset stuff. And depending where you are in your business, there's different techniques that will work for different people. But for some people, it could be just as easy as getting your customer testimonials, putting them up somewhere where you can see them, right? So don't leave them in your, in your laptop. Don't leave them on your website where you never even go and look at them. Have them in maybe a little book or something. And before you get on your sales call, read a couple of them. And every time you read them, I mean, I still me now, I'm like, oh, that's right. You know, that, uh, you know I loved working with that client. And wow, I really, I helped change this woman's life. And you go into your sales call knowing your value, your real value about how you can really help people and you won't, you'll start selling from a different mindset instead of like, oh, buy from me because I kind of need money right now or, you know, I think it's pretty good what I'm selling. It's like not like that. It's kind of like I know that this is going to really help this person. This is really going to help you. If you're not interested, that's fine. You know, um, you can walk away and it's great being great to meet you. But you know what? This is worth it. Would you like to go ahead? You know, it, it's just coming from a different energy. Uh, so it's about setting yourself up to remember and recognise your value. What is unique about what you do? Why is this going to be a, a, a really great move for the customer to say yes to? And then it's about presenting your, you know, in a way to help the customer to get that. Leaving out all of that other stuff, like all the features and the stuff that they don't care about, just talking to what's in it for them, what's really going to be helpful for them. And the best way to do that, Agnes, is to ask really good questions. Yeah. So if you can kind of take that away, that will already make your uh, sales process better. They're some of the things that I helped her with. And then the other thing was that she, she never got around any objections. Um, and it's not necessarily about getting around objections or that to tell people. It's kind of more, you know, you just really need to understand what they're bringing up and kind of thank them for bringing that up. And it's kind of a lot of the time really what objections are is people need more information. They just haven't got the information that they need. And instead of saying, oh, isn't that too expensive? They won't say that. They'll go, oh, no, that's too expensive. Uh, it's just the way we kind of are as human beings. But instead of thinking to yourself, oh, they've said it's too expensive, I'm going to get off the phone now, you have to think to yourself, no, they're asking me for more information. And you just say, look, thank you so much for bringing that up. That always has to be your first 
uh, your first uh, response is to agree with them. And I see them do this in Shark Tank all the time. Have you ever seen Shark Tank or um, Dragon's Den in the UK? Do you watch that show? No. Uh, it's really cool. It's um, they, where entrepreneurs try and get investment from these kind of big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, do, I see them do it. It's such a rookie mistake. And I'm just like, if someone gives you an objection, you don't fight with them. You get into this tug of war and you'll never win. Mm -hmm. uh, someone gives you an objection. Uh, they might have said, um, you know, they've got five grand to spend, that, that, you know, and then they say, oh, oh, but, you know, 3,500, that's too much. You don't, and you want to go, but you said, you know, bull crap, this is, you, you know, you've got five. You want to say all that, but no, you never, ever do that. And again, if you can just get one tip from takeaway from answering objections, agree or say, I hear you. I hear you. People want to be heard and understood at the very minimum. Um, that's just how it is. So let's if, say, so let's yeah. say partly, you know, in conversations, people uh, sometimes still want to make a decision right away and they're like, okay, let me think about it or let me get back to you or I'm tied up in other programs at the moment, don't have the time right now, right? So uh, what do you think is the best way to handle that situation? So then you would just say, okay, I agree with you, and then? Yeah, great question, Agnes, absolutely. So if someone says that, um, you say, absolutely, I hear you. And this is what I say personally. I say, if it's a big um, monetary investment, I, I say, I always love to sleep on things. So absolutely, you can. But I just want to make sure that you've got all the information that you need. And this is where I tease out the objections. I'll say, so how do you feel about the investment, you know, the money? And they go, oh, yeah, no, that's fine, right? And then you say, and how about, like, the time investment? And they go, um, yeah, so how, how long is this going to be anyway? And you say, you know, okay, this is going to be an hour of your time a week or whatever it might be. And they go, yeah, okay, that's great. And uh, then you might say, um, so just out of interest, can you see, like, you know, is this kind of the right time for you to do something like this? How do you feel about that? And that's when you might, like, say in your example, Agnes, I think that potentially some people might say, yeah, not quite. That's the funny thing. And then you can talk it out. You know, they'll say, you know, right now I've got a big project coming up and, and you know, I just don't have the time for this. And you say, yeah, absolutely, I hear you. You've got a big, and that sounds really exciting. But did you know that if we um, work on getting you podcasts now, it could make your launch like up to twice as, as, um, as big, yeah, and, and personally, I know a coach who does a, an interview a week, a podcast interview a week, and she's created a multi-million dollar business from that. Um, and so you pepper it with little case studies whenever possible, but really all you're wanting to do is getting them, you want to tease out objections, if anything. Don't be afraid of objections. You want to welcome them and tease them out. Uh, yeah, so does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And also... One aspect that I'm very curious about, I saw that you put out a lot of videos, you know, as part of your marketing strategy. So I'm curious, you know, how was it for you when you started putting yourself out there and posting these videos on social media and, you know, selling your services? Sure. So here's what I'm really passionate about speaking about. And what I want to say to anyone listening is, what is the thing that you are resisting? What's that thing that you go, oh, I should do that, but mm, nah, I don't want to do that. Or I should do that and oh, I'll get around to it. For a lot of people at sales, which is why I love helping people with sales, because a lot of the time once we get them that help, they're like, oh, this isn't that far. This isn't that hard. This is actually pretty fun. And there's this immense amount of energy that comes back to you from not, you know, from just stopping resisting this thing that you've been resisting for so long. And it's almost like this shadow of this thing is a lot bigger than the actual thing itself. So when you face that thing, you, you start to see it as it is. And you're like, oh, that's not that bad. But not only that, the thing that you are resisting is oftentimes the thing that is going to give you that breakthrough that you want in your life and in your business, depending on where that resistance is. 
So for me, Agnes, um, it was around shooting videos and putting them out there. I was so scared of it. I really was. I was like, for a start, who's going to want to listen to stuff I've got to say? Hasn't it all been, all been said anyway? People might hate me. You know, I came from a girls' school, um, you know, and there was, I guess, a bit of ganging up and stuff like that going through girls' school. And, and especially in Australia, we've got like this tall poppy syndrome, whereas if you put your head up, you know, and you stick out, people love to, to chop it off. So I'm like, oh, God, if I put myself out there, people are going to go, who does she think she is? You know, this kind of thing. So long story short, very terrified, very, very. And I've got to say, so I did put it off for, for quite a bit of time. Um, and the first few times I posted, my hands were actually shaking as I pressed post. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not talking about just like a little bit, oh, I'm a bit scared about that. I'm talking about physical fear you know so how I got around that is well for a start I just made myself do it because I know that whatever I resist in my life always shows up to be my biggest um my biggest breakthrough uh but also um I you know and if anyone's thinking about creating content and they're scared first up it's okay to be scared secondly if you can just again put yourself in the mind, in the life, in the hearts of your ideal client and ask yourself what that person is struggling with right now. Even if you can think about one person who is like that that person, you know, might be a friend of yours, what are they struggling with right now that if they worked with you or bought your product or service, you could help them with? Um, so what are they struggling with today? And then just help them. Give them a tip around that. And, and that's what I did. Agnes and um, I, I try and keep the tips really super short anyone doing social media if you can keep them around a minute even most of the time YouTube's a little bit different obviously um, depends on the platform you're on but we've got super short attention spans these days so you want to go in talk about you know what they're struggling with give them the tip and then tell them how this is going to help them when they implement it if you can do that it's not about you. It doesn't become about you anymore. It becomes about them and they appreciate it. You know, people have just been, you know, had, had such a great response and pretty much from the get-go I was getting like a 1,000 views on LinkedIn almost immediately and which is kind of crazy to me. But they have got, you know, people that look through the content and if they like it they kind of promote it. Um, yeah, and people people appreciate it, but it's been a game changer in my business. It filled my coaching practice, um, I won't say quickly. The other thing about content, which I want to warn everybody about, because it's about, you know, and I love that this podcast is about being real. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen. So, uh, and you'll go through weeks of going, oh, my God, what am I going to say? I've got nothing new to say, especially I was doing content five days a week. And that's okay. You just sit down and do it anyway. Uh, but after a couple of months, you're like, nothing's really even happening. Why am I even doing this? This is taking me so much time. You know, um, persist. Persist and keep consistent because after about three months, give or take, you'll get a little trickle of people coming through. Hmm, what did you know about your products and services? After seven months, and a lot of people actually said this to me or a few people, and, uh, you know, that you, that's when the kind of avalanche happens and that's exactly what happened for me you must persist around seven months should be the sweet spot um just keep on going and just stay as consistent as you can and it is so worth it and let me just bring it back to sales for any of you who don't really like selling oh my gosh content creating videos or blogs whatever you might like to do is such a powerful sales tool in that it helps you not to have to sell because by the time they get on the phone with you they already know you so well it's like they know me they, they kind of they've been following my stuff for ages they've maybe even been training their teams with my my content so I don't even have to tell them about who I am and what my background is and I even had a client and I told you this Agnes um who just rang and said I, I'm, I'm going ahead, you know, with my private coaching. Um, and she didn't even look, care about the price. She didn't even ask about it. That's how much she'd been kind of waiting to be able to do coaching. 
she must have had an influx of money coming in and she's like, whatever this costs, I'm working with Kate. She'd already made up her mind. So imagine having sales calls where you don't have to sell and that's the power of, of content, you know, content that really helps people, sets you up as an expert, uh, that puts you in front of up to, you know, thousands of people every day. That's really super powerful, you know, and I'm really wondering how was it for you when you started out? Like how long did it really take for you to sit down, think about what you're going to say and put in the work and get the right recording and cut it together and post it? Great question. I am so, depends on when you're talking about. So as few videos are put out on YouTube, it would take me up to two days to do a five minute video. Wow. I thought it was, yeah. I thought I was a good speaker and I am pretty good on the spot, but you put a camera on me and then let my all my mindset crap get in the way and I was a new business owner at the time and I don't know, I just, I would stumble over a word or I wouldn't like something. I was a perfectionist as well. I'm definitely a recovering perfectionist now because done is better than perfect every time. You've probably heard people say that. So important to hear. So uh, with all of that, it took me ages, right? Um, to start with and then funnily enough I'd get people saying oh Kate this video is amazing you're such a natural on video and I'm like do you know how long this bloody thing took me how many takes all the rest of it it took me forever so if anyone's out there going oh my god I hate myself on video that was such a shit video I could never post that please don't despair don't despair persist just all you have to do is just keep going Try and, you know, if it takes you a few days to get one video to start with, it's fine. Put the work in, you're worth it. If you're called to this, you know, if there's something going, I'd like to do it, but I don't want to, persist. You know, spend the time, invest in, you know, putting it into, uh, you know, getting it up to a standard where you're happy to put it out. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, the next time I did videos, it was for LinkedIn. And why that made it so much easier for me is instead of giving a whole lot of different points to, to talk about one subject, I just need to speak about one really good tip or strategy on that subject. So I was able to introduce it, give my point, and then close up. And that made it really easy for me because I just had to think about one thing. Anytime I have to think, oh, what do I have to, you know, it gets me out of the flow. I'm much better if I'm just able to be in flow and just able to talk about one thing. So that made it easier for me, but I have um, gotten much better with my process. And now I've discovered, see, I'm one of those people, Agnes, I just wing things a lot of the time. Like I'll just, I'll rock up and I'll just give it a go. And most of the time it turns out well, which is, which is good and fine. And, but with video, I have found that my process, and I'll share it with you, if it, you know, in case it helps other people, is to ask what people are struggling with and I'll write that down. I'll mm -hmm. actually uh, uh, write a really good title like are you struggling with or, you know, are you struggling to make sales? Um, and then I will write, you know, uh, I'll write a, a short paragraph about what I'm going to say. Then I'll drive down to the beach, which is like three minutes from my house, which I, I should have nice. my video on the beach. <laughs> yeah. And then I sit in the car or even at the lights on the way down, I will be, I'll be just going through, like I will do oftentimes between five and 11 videos um, in an hour now, which is much, much better than the two days it used to take me. Uh, but I, it took me a while to get up to that, people, so please don't expect that to start with. If you just maybe do two or three, and I do think it's good to, um, to uh, bulk do them um, when, when you can, especially as a business owner, we get busy. It's better to focus on just one thing. I personally take three tops down or, or 11 tops in a little bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I wear my yoga, like I've got a yoga onesie, right? And I wear that down the beach and I will literally take a top off, put another one on, take one off, put one on. That's what I do. And I just awesome. like the camera. Yeah, so that makes it easier and quicker for me because everyone's like, how do you find time to do videos every day? I'm like, I bulk, uh, you know, I uh, bulk do them. And, and it is a smart way to do it, especially if you're a woman too. If you wear a bit of my makeup, I hate wearing makeup when I don't have to wear it. So I will oftentimes just get my makeup done, just go down, do it um, in one go. That's my process and that's made it much easier. 
think if you can have little processes that help speed things up, then that's uh, you're winning. So I'm curious also because you mentioned, you know, that you take a couple of shirts with you and then you change them. How would it be for you if you just post it with the same shirt, you know? Yeah, no, nah, well, for me personally, so I know that it's kind of comes out like it might be a different day, but I'm posting on a different day. So for me personally, I just like, you know, I want it to be different. I want it to appear different because I don't like samey, samey things. If someone's doing, it could be a thing of yours. And I know somebody does content in the same shirt every time. I don't mind it if other people do it. But for me personally, with my branding and everything else, I love clothes for a start. I love clothes. I love color. I love um, different things, you know, like mixing it up, newness. So that makes sense for my brand to do it that way. And, you know, I do want people to also see it's a different tip because sometimes I've got like three or four tips running in the feed at any time because um, if anyone's on LinkedIn, if you do a video on LinkedIn, if a new person comments on your video, it'll appear back in the feed. So I might have videos from days ago appearing in the feed, whereas if I was in the same top, but I'd done three different videos, people wouldn't click on them. Whereas mm -hmm. if they see me in a different top, they know it's a different tip. But then again, if someone asks me, I'll tell them straight out and I'll tell them publicly, like in the comments, I oftentimes will do all of these videos at once. However, having said that too, I will sometimes, if I'm out of videos or whatever, I will pop a video in my office and I'll shoot one on the day. And especially if there's something that's just come up. So I don't always do it like that, but that's how I often do it. And how is it for you currently? Because, you know, you've been putting yourself out there for a while. Do you still have certain insecurities about posting? Yeah, totally. Um, so for me personally, I feel like if I'm not helping people, directly giving them a really actionable advice, that I am wasting people's time and I hate wasting people's time. Um, so you know how people, especially on Facebook, are really good at just talking about oh, and this is what I did today and, you know, they're, they're good at that. And the thing is it actually really works. People love to hear about people's behind the scenes, their personal lives, all this kind of stuff. I find it really challenging to share that stuff now. Same here. <laughs> yeah, right. Cool. So I, I have shared a couple which actually did really well. Like there's this really atrocious story where I went and did an event and my skirt rode up at the back or the lining did. So I basically was showing my undies for about two hours coming from the bed, back on the train and stuff. Oh, my God, such an embarrassing thing. So I was scared about sending, sharing that, but I thought it was a really funny story. After I got over myself and my embarrassment, I thought I'm going to do a video on this. And I thought I won't necessarily share it, but I'll do it. So I just, I just talked to the camera and shot it because I thought this is pretty bloody funny. And, it, and also to help people to know that if you do have a massive disaster, that it's actually not that bad in the end. You know, you can laugh at yourself and, you know, people don't really care. Um, but, yeah, it did really well. I did like, you know, 4,000 or so views or something on that and people thought it was really funny. You know, they got a good giggle, which is great. Um, but recently I had one of my husband and I kind of just dancing around doing this painting stuff and it was only about a minute long. And I thought, oh, I like the video, but, you know, because it was fun and a bit different. But I was nervous about posting that because, yeah, I, it was different. I think whenever we do anything that's new and outside our box, we're going to be nervous. And it's important to know, though, that not everything is going to work. And that post I did with my husband did work and people like to see that side of me. But not everything is going to work and that's okay. As entrepreneurs, we have to get good at knowing that we're going to give it a go and we're going to survive the next day. If the bot post bombs, you know, is anyone dead? No. You know, um, have we learned something? Yes. Um, so we have to just really change our mindset about, you know, specific, you know, disasters. And, and it can be hard when you're used to like, at one stage I was used to getting up to like 6,000 views and then a video only got 300 views. And I was like, oh, my God, that must have been really shit kind of. And you go to this like, oh you feel worse about yourself and I had to like I caught myself pretty quickly but I was like get over yourself girl this is craziness you know but it's all about our expectations so we have to be you know expect to learn expect to 
uh, con and congratulate yourself every time you take a step that's outside your comfort zone, that you do something that's scary um, because it means you're growing as a person and when you grow as a person, you will grow as an entrepreneur. That I can guarantee. Yeah, I love that. So uh, is there anything else besides business that really resulted in a breakthrough in your sales coaching career? Uh, well, the, the recent thing I've done you know, recently, uh, which I'm still doing, is uh, which scared me again, is um, I'm putting on the LinkedIn Lead Generation Summit. And I'm doing it because LinkedIn's been so transformational for my own business. And a lot of people don't know how to do it the right way. But I, Agnes, still had to contact all of the biggest people on a 7 billion person platform in the world. Like I've got some like the biggest, biggest names. Uh, and that's really hard to do, like to sit there and like little old me in Australia, you know, talking to these people and, um, you know, enrolling them in this idea of doing the summit. So, and uh, it's, yeah, it's just not easy. Uh, and then, you know, you interview them and you must have felt this yourself sometimes when you're speaking to, you know, successful people and, and you're like, oh, you know, how's it going to go? And I feel a bit nervous before the interview sometimes. And that is okay. Um, but already it's been so great for myself and my and and it will be really great for my business. I know it will because it's shaping up to be a pretty epic event. Uh, so that's something recently that I've done that scared me that I was like, why am I doing this again? Oh, my God, the amount of work and the amount of fear every day that you have to come up against. But anything that makes you grow makes you a better entrepreneur. And it expands you and your energy to be able to handle more clients, more money coming in. If you're only kind of like this in this little, little world, you can only really accept this amount of money and clients. You need to do this. And to do that, you need to grow. And the, one of the best ways to grow is to challenge yourself to do the stuff that scares you. Yeah, I love that. Do you still have a last key takeaway, something that really helped you grow, like a personal insight you would like to share? Just do the thing. I'd love everyone to think about one thing that they're resisting today that they know is going to really make a big difference. And I think everyone knows that thing. And whatever that thing is, can you just set aside some time to start, even 15 minutes? You know, can you do it tomorrow? Can you do it today? If you can just get started and just have in your mind, um, you can even ask questions like, you know, um, what would it look like if this was really easy for me? What would it look like to not be afraid of this? These are really good questions to ask yourself because our subconscious mind is incredibly powerful. And when you ask great questions of your subconscious, it will get on board and it will actually help making, the, making that stuff happen for you. Whereas if you're asking yourself, you're saying, oh, this is so hard. Oh, I'm, you know, you don't want to do that. What would it take to make this really easy? What would it take to make this fun? What would it look like to get started right now? Could I spend 15 minutes on this right now and start on the thing that you're resisting? That would be my last, what I'd really love people to get from this. Awesome. So where can people find you online? How can they contact you? So I'd love you to come and, and visit me on LinkedIn, Kate Hall Lacey. Uh, you should be able to find me on there. KateHallLacey.com is my website. Um, you know, reach out. Uh, I mean, I'm, I am on Facebook, not much. So mainly on LinkedIn and on my website. Um, and if you're not on LinkedIn yet, come and join this summit. It is going to be epic. I'll share details with you, Agnes, uh, just so maybe people can see, you know, pop up again because the experts are sharing the best information, stuff that people pay thousands and thousands of dollars for. And it's such a great platform and it's only getting better. So um, I invite people to that as well. It's free. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll make sure to include the link in the show notes. So uh, thank you so much for all of these great tips today. And for everyone who's watching or listening, we would love you to take your favorite takeaway and comment it below the video. So uh, see you next week.